Good morning, guys, and welcome to today's edition of the London Session Open. Today is uh, September 30th, and it's 9.43 a.m. in London when I'm doing this market update. My name is Alejandro Zambrano, and I'm the Global Chief Market Strategist with ATFX and also the manager of investingcube.com. Uh, let's take a look at the markets. Uh, today, as well as you probably noticed, we're doing a recording. We're actually not doing this live. Um, it's going to be a busy day today, so I just had a little slot now to be able to produce these videos. Okay, so uh, Euro versus the USD. As you can see, it's trying to create some sort of head and shoulders with the head, left and right shoulder here on your one hour chart. And I think that makes sense because down here where we are right now, even though we reached a new uh, 2019th low, it does not make sense to actually sell um, because of the overall conditions and as well. It's a market which has sort of slid to new levels in the past, like here, and then it has a strong reaction to the upside. So it's usually not a good idea to sell on breakouts in the euro dollar. Um, it hasn't been at least in 2019. So where is it interesting to short sell the euro versus the dollar? Well, probably around one, uh, sorry, 109.86, maybe up here. Uh, and as long as you trade below 110.28, uh, so between these two levels, that's where I think the people are going to start to try to short sell. Now, here's your pound versus the USD. And as you might remember, we're dealing with the head and shoulders. So you got yourself a head, left, and right shoulder, and you had to break to the downside. I shorted a bit myself. I shorted here and I traded it down to about uh, 123, uh, close that, I think, midday on Friday. Um, the market now will probably continue to trade lower. And I have lowered that sell zone level. Oh, well, I'm doing it now, actually to the first fib at 123.59. If it swings back up to this level, it may be up to 124, 124.10. I do think people are gonna be quite keen on selling here or stop loss orders just above the high here. I think eventually we could hit that inverse and uh, price target and I think 122 or so makes a lot of sense and then we'll see what happens afterwards. Uh, dollar versus the Japanese yen. So the stock markets in general are a bit sort of, um, they're definitely bearish. The NASDAQ 100 has been bearish at least and the German DAX has also tried to trade lower, but hasn't really managed too much. So I think is that all influx by quantitative easing money and low interest rates that are pushing things upwards. On the other hand, you have uh, as well uh, sort of the impeachment inquiry of President Trump. You got the trade wars as well, which is not looking as good at all. Um, so I am uh, with the latest move actually being uh, that they're going to introduce, um, what do you call it? I have it in front of me here that they're going to introduce uh, sanctions, uh, not sanctions, they're going to introduce, oh, sorry, delist Chinese companies in the US. Um, that's something they threaten about, uh, not officially, but unofficially. And then as well, the US just put sanctions on Chinese companies that were dealing with Iran. So uh, there's a lot of different things. And then you got the actual speech in the UN, which was not really good, even though afterwards, uh, I mean, if you saw actually President Trump speaking, I mean, yeah, what he was saying and what he was, his body language was showing and the way he said what he said didn't at least inspire me any any sort of uh, expectations that we have any trade deals coming up. And not only that, the VTO is now enabling the US to put um, increased tariffs, I think it was, on some uh, European goods because the VTO ruled in the favor of the US. So that's not really going to uh, make the Europeans happy. I think the amount was seven and a half billion euros, so it's quite a lot of money. Um, but then again, you have these things, you know, sort of the market's been pushed back and forward on the back of that. And so far, at least German DAX is holding up well. And I think that's sort of helping this market to, to trade above or trade um, where it is trading. We'll see what happens afterwards. I reckon that even if, you know, we're not going to go much lower, which I still think we will do. I still think we need to go down a bit. I still think we can easily go down to 106.50, uh, as long as we're below 108.49. Um, elsewhere, uh, let's take a look at, uh, uh, let's take a look at Brent crude, actually US, better. Uh, so the market fully closed that gap. So everybody that, you know, trades these gaps, probably super happy about that. Uh, the market pretty much went back to the level seen on Friday ahead of the attacks on the Saudi crude oil production facilities. Um, the trend remains overall bullish, as you can see per this trend line. Um, but unfortunately, we're still trading within 
this little range here so I wouldn't get too excited but if you think that things will escalate between Iran and Saudi Arabia and the US uh, and Israel then you want to be looking to buy here <coughs> the trend is bullish about 5078 gold prices this uh, is either a really good opportunity to short sell or a really good opportunity to buy um, the idea for me has been to be in bullish here we were right about that first push uh, even though it was a bit difficult uh, it went up uh, and we also I think if I remember no actually we did not talk about buying here um, what you're dealing with here as you can see is head and shoulders left right shoulder take out the low and we we'll, then the pattern suggests we can tumble all the way down to 1415 now we're really really close to that support level now so uh, I'm not saying we should buy I don't really believe in the buying and silver price is not holding up very well but if one would buy here you're looking at about six times risk reward ratio the reason why the risk reward ratio is so good is because we're literally seconds of being stopped out here or a few hours so probably uh, so I would say a few dollars really to be stopped out on the other hand we take this out you get quite a big negative reaction and we can probably trade lower S&P, what's going on here? So the S&P um, is in the sell zone. It looks like it wants to bounce, but it's not uh, being able to, I mean, it did bounce, but did not really go too deep. What I've done here now is I'm gonna push this down to just the highs. Remember, stop was here, the idea was to sell here. So if one would have traded on the back of that, it would be now a break even. And people, uh, and then one now can one can now short, uh, so reduce the stop loss on that one and do something like this. As well, on, uh, investing cube I have been talking about the Nasdaq 100 and I've been doing updates on that a few times and I insisted on being bearish so I said if we take when we're trading here I said if we take out the low we're probably gonna lower which you did and then when we're trading up here I said look trade below this level and the market's gonna go down and I think now again we can lower this new trend of funding level will be the 7828 level and uh, as long as trade below that level people are gonna sell we almost hit the target on Friday and I think we could probably, if we do go up, I think people are going to sell. Finally, German DAX. German DAX is being uh, capped, was capped by the high of September 23rd. Unfortunately, it went slightly above that. And we did try to short sell here. Because remember, we're trading within this rectangle. And we went down, almost touched target. And then we went back up to the point here. It would not have been anything bad with shorting here. Put stop losses here. But as you can see now, the market is, you know, rather... Um, bullish and the market is not really interested to trade much lower what I would suggest now is let's take a defensive stance this is a low from September 27th and as you can see we're creating higher and higher lows so if we trade below a level that could be what resumes that downtrend and the big picture there's some interesting patterns playing out here um you could connect this high to via yeah, these highs here you get a massive head and shoulders with a big head left and a right shoulder you know suggesting significantly higher prices you can see suggest a move up towards 14,910 but then you have this which is a triangle this which is a triangle and that's probably what's going to dominate you will probably and i still insist that we probably will go back down to the middle and then maybe in the next few months break up or down okay guys that concludes today's market update i'm not really sure exactly when to come back to on a fixed time i do know this though you know doing the webinar much later it's not going to help enough of you guys i can see that it's not too many people actually tuning in as before so that's where i'm trying to do them now Ideally, I will do them at 8 a.m., but unfortunately, I have some other commitments at 8 a.m. that makes it very difficult to do them, but I'm trying to figure something out, and I should hopefully know in the next few weeks how that's going to plan out. Otherwise, what I'm going to do when I do have time, I'll do them in the morning so you still have them. I think the best thing you may do is to make sure you follow me on Twitter, uh, so that will be at AlexFX00. Uh, you can also follow me on my WhatsApp, as you know, uh, you'll find that on my Twitter. So just look for AlexFX00. And you can also and should subscribe to the YouTube channel of uh, ATFX. Uh, that will be ATFX UK. 
and there you get notifications when we upload videos that's probably even the best uh, if, you, if you click on the little bell button you get a notification when these videos are uploaded and that way you wouldn't miss them because they would as soon as they go live as soon as I, they go live on the site or I do the live webinar you will get a notification okay guys have a brilliant day and happy trading and I'll see you guys tomorrow thank you and bye